Okay, good morning, afternoon, evening, whenever you see this. This is uh, D with uh, Older INF Probably Insights, and today I am so excited to have with us as a guest um, Eric Thor, and everybody knows probably who Eric Thor is, but he um, has extensive um, experience in uh, MBTI typology and YouTube creatorship, so uh, welcome, Eric. Thank you so much for having me. I was... Uh... Really surprised because I'd never run into your channel before, but when I saw it, it was really cool that you reached out. So I'm really looking forward to this discussion and also to get some insight into what it can be to be an older INFP and to, yeah, what happens when INFPs have more life experience in general. Right, right. What happens on the other side? Yeah. Oh, good. Um, well, first off, um, most people know who you are. But uh, a lot of people who may be just um, strolling through or clicking through don't know who you are. Can you just tell um, a little bit who Eric Thor is, your experience with the uh, typology and um, how you got into YouTube? And you've been here quite a while, I think. Yeah, I've been around on YouTube for since 2007. I started making yeah. videos first about politics, later on about personal uh -huh. growth. And for me, I'm just all passionate about life, getting to know people all over the world and learning how people think and learning how people feel. And uh, on YouTube, what I try to do is I try to make videos that make people feel a little bit happier, a little bit lighter, a little bit better. So I'm very focused on well-being, flow, and on personal development in general. And I often use the Myers-Briggs type indicator as a lens to do that. So I use that as a tool to help people discover more about who they are, what their passions are, what their values are, and uh, how they think. And yeah, then I use that in a sense for coaching and to help people grow and just learn more things about themselves. Yeah, and um, I, I'm glad you said that uh, with the Myers-Briggs or any type of, of test, that it is a tool, whereas um, a lot of people, and I think maybe a lot of younger people, I'm not sure, y'all, Everybody will correct me out there if, if I'm wrong, but I think maybe the younger ones uh, kind of stamp it. I mean, like like tattoo it, like I'm an INFJ or I'm INFP or I'm an ESTJ or what, whatever. And then I, maybe the older you get, um, we were talking beforehand, both of us, which is interesting, both of us about the same time here lately have decided that... Um, you don't have to be stuck. You can you can change. You can develop. You can use different um, functions. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think when you're younger, it's uh, there's a search for an identity, and yeah. uh, for many people, the MBTI can provide you with that sense of reassurance because there's mm -hmm. not the we don't talk a lot about personality in general today. We talk about right. you know how to what work you want to do and what you want to be right. when you grow up, but we don't really talk about our feelings, our values our personal interests and hobbies to the same extent and so the mbti is like it gives people this reassurance that oh yeah this is something that that's me that's what i want that's what i that's how i think and i think because of that people get very addicted almost to this to just learning right. everything they can about it and you know figuring out things about themselves so how long have you been interested in the mbti yourself and uh, what did you, what was it for you like when you found out your personality type the first time well, actually, I found out about it, um, and a, a lot of people know I do have a mental health background, which is um, in midlife. I went back to school when I was 40, so um, my first job I had at um, the whole organization, it was in healthcare. The whole organization had to take the MBTI, the Myers-Briggs, never heard of it before, even though I was in mental health but at mainly into the diagnoses and the holistic view of the mind, body, spirit. Uh, I, I'm into applications and not theory. So this was totally foreign to me. So we had to take the test. And I tested, I laughed because I was depressed and I have a video that's coming out in a couple of weeks. Is my life as an INTP? I tested an INTP. And mm. so we um, had to get in the room and they said, well, get in a group according to your type. So um, there were three other people in the whole room of 30 who were INTPs. <laughs> and um, you might imagine the uh, ESJs were all, you know, a hundred of them were 
<laughs> you know what happened one time. But of the ones, um, with my experience, of the other three that were the INTP, they were all scientists. And I am a writer, and I love sports. I love to be outdoors. I love nature. I can't do science. Um, and I'm thinking, I don't, I, I just cringed. I just, <laughs> I could not relate. So I went until um, a couple of years ago. I took the test online. And because um, I just said, I went from 30 years thinking I was an INTP. And 30 years of thinking that and knowing that I, this is not where I belong at all. Um, and um, so I um, tested as INFP. Um, I think I, that's when I started hanging around the INFJs. And I think they softened me up a little bit. <laughs> I, I, I mean that seriously. You know, I, I think INFJs do soften us up a little bit. We come out a little more mindful i learned the word mindful for the first time from an infj and so now i test and and now i test anywhere from infp enfp isfp and infj so i am who whoever i want to be so yeah um, it sounds like it, they helped you get more in touch with your feeling side as well right because right sometimes when carl jung talked about i or introverted feeling types in general, he said they could almost come off as a bit cold sometimes, especially right. if they kept their feelings to themselves, right? So perhaps right. it was just the case that you were really keeping your feelings to yourself a lot and uh, yeah, weren't really sharing it a lot. And because of that, you came off a lot as a thinking type, right? But maybe right. over time you became more comfortable just opening up about yourself and who you were. Right. And um, I think, um, yeah, I think I... Our, um, and I've got more videos com coming out about that. They're, they're already ready to go. But um, I, I think our environment has a lot to do with it and survival because INFPs are very adaptable. Um, we don't change who we are. We know our core, but we adapt in our environment. So if you're going to be around like me with, um, I think my INTP life was when I was in grad school. And I was in university and we did, it's a research program. And um, so I did two years of research. <clears throat> so there was no feeling. You couldn't just touchy feely, you know, <laughs> kind of thing. It was, it, it, it was all cerebral. Yeah. So I, I think that's where that, I think that kind of shifted. Um, and it's, and it's never really been um, that, oh, excuse me, we have pollen season. It's never really been that strong either. It's only been like maybe 55 to 45% from the T and F and me anyway. Hmm. And then, um, yeah, so I've got a video about that. My life is an INTP coming out. And then later on in May, there's one about um, stuffing your feelings cause some and, and, and the fight of what it's like to have to stuff your feelings all your life. But it comes to the point there's a coming out process. Because I can tell you, I can tell you being, I'm in my 70s. I don't mind saying that now, but I can tell you being in the 70s and it takes what took me to retirement because I didn't have to worry about getting fired <laughs> to be myself. <laughs> but um, you can develop and um, who you are uh, wants to come out more when you get older yeah that's uh really true i actually read a study arguing that people are the happiest in their 70s oh, and really? i kind of believe it because uh you retired and uh, yeah. you can do whatever it is that you want to do uh, and uh, yeah uh i think there's a confidence and a like relief and comfort in that maybe some pride too right and you can say what you want to say I, I remember as a child um I, I was looking forward to being older because real small children and really old people can get away with anything. <laughs> but in between, you have you have to go by the rules. And mm -hmm. now my excuse is I can pretend like I have a little dementia or I can say I live alone or I can use all kinds of excuses. You know, I'm retired or I live alone or I senior moment 
I can make up something whenever things I say don't go over too well with the book with my friends or neighbors. You know? <laughs> yeah, I have no excuses for that. <laughs> no, you've got a long way to go before you do that. Yeah. <laughs> But oh, I will. Yeah. They, people are used to be by me by now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pe people are used to me, but they still kind of look, they, they laugh. They laugh at me, which in a way it's kind of good because I like to make people laugh. I like to make, like you, I like to make their days better. But then when I'm really trying to be serious, I want to be taken seriously. And it's like, uh, oh, you're so funny. And I'm like, no. <laughs> I'm not, I'm being serious now. <laughs> yeah, I can see like uh, many INFPs or many of my INFP viewers often come to me with questions about identity issues and how to deal with, you know, what the world thinks yeah. of you and how, uh, you know, because even if INFPs are said to be like very like authentic and good at staying true to themselves, it still must be quite difficult to carry that. Uh, you know when you are yourself other people are going to have opinions about you and they're going to make judgments about you in right. a way right yeah and the thing I think about the INFP and I really don't know any in real, in real life I met a whole lot since the pandemic um, on zoom and zoom meetings and meetups and whatnot um, that nobody I, I've come to realize this I don't think nobody including INFPs can figure out the INFP. And I don't really know why that is, but we we are, are it's called, they say we're elusive and mysterious, but we, um, I don't know what it is, but nobody can figure us out. Honestly, I like to believe that all human beings are like that. I like to believe that everyone has that elusiveness and mysteriousness. Yeah. I think it's just a matter of INFPs spend more time digging like they okay. they're more introspective so they uh -huh. discover more of these nuances and they're also cool. better at noticing because INFPs seem to be really good at like uh, you know cognitive flexibility just knowing how to who they are from multiple points of views being able to think or empathize with from different perspectives how other people might see things right uh, right, so right. perhaps it's just that you're you're more attuned to your own mysteriousness uh, in a sense but uh my experience also talking to people and going out to uh -huh. people people don't always reflect a lot on who they are and they don't always ask a lot of questions a lot of people they just go mm -hmm. with the flow then with the stream of things that doesn't mean that they don't have unique feelings and struggles right. and things inside them that they're not talking about right so it's always there right. it's always an interesting conversation to be had and probably that's why you know uh, mental health for, uh, is such an important field and why you know uh today more than ever i think people really need psychology and the self-awareness mm -hmm. and like space to think about something else than work right they need their alone time they need their yeah. alone time yeah 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 alone time as well as uh, opportunities to talk with other people i think because uh right we'd often like to have conversations between uh, with our friends and family members about these things but we don't always know mm -hmm. how to start those conversations and how, how to talk about these things as well so creating a language and a way for people to do that in a way that they can feel safe to like I think that can also be very important right right I, I think I find um, a lot of people that I know uh, it's uncomfortable and I can tell it's uncomfortable if you just I've learned to kind of sidestep things that I want to talk about because if you go right into it, you just turn them totally off with a, you know, whatever they do. But um, if you sidestep it and go slowly into this subject, uh, it's very uncomfortable for the rest of the world. Um, if you're not, particularly if you're not an intuitive, if you're a sensor. Yeah. yeah. It's true. I notice sometimes I can go too deep in the psychology or aspect yeah. of the things when I talk to my friends and family members. And then I have to kind of like take a second to take a step back. And, you know, uh, because I have learned this skill I thought was really interesting from there's this uh, YouTuber, Healthy Gamer GG or Dr. K. And he okay. did this in many of his interviews. Uh, he mm -hmm. does this thing where he goes high and he goes low. So when he notices that the person he's interviewing is starting to get uncomfortable or they're going very heavy, 
then right. he brings it up to the surface right. again. So people know that, you know, you can go up for air if you need to, right. and if you need to make a joke and if you need to make light of the situation or, you know, like do something funny or light, you know, you can do that. And that space should always be there, right? Right, right. And that's that's what that's what I, I try to do. And I think a lot of people try to do that too. Uh, and if they don't, that's a good skill to learn. Yes, is to be in tune to how the person's reacting to what you're saying or how they're going to, you know, um, or if they're uncomfortable, if they're going deep and they're getting into their own thing and um, and they're getting upset, maybe trauma coming up. And, you know, this isn't a therapy session. So, you know, let's talk about something else. You know, <laughs> you know, how was your day? You know, <laughs> let's do superficial that you don't like. So so that was yeah. good. Yeah. So uh, I wanted to get into uh, really, really, really. You got a second channel, and um, I'm saying alluring again. What <laughs> I told you before, man, I was going to do. <laughs> <laughs> actually, yeah. I'm probably yeah. your actually. <laughs> yes, I'm actually. I've actually got the nine fifty channel. <laughs> so you just started a new channel, and I heard you yeah. say the other day you might do other um, MBTI. But there's sixteen. You didn't realize that that there are sixteen, and there are only twenty four hours in a day. So um, I want to know about your actually INFP channel. Everybody wants to know about that. Um, and how and why did you pick INFPs? And uh, what do you want to do with us? How, how yeah. is that going to be different? Yeah. So I'll start with the beginning. And that is that I've had this YouTube channel, Eric Thor, where I just right. share from everything, every point of view and every right. personality type. And uh, yeah. uh, one thing that uh, came to was that I want to start uh, um, instead of talking about specific personality types on my channel I want to start mm -hmm. uh, expanding the perspective a bit and also mm -hmm. getting out a little bit of the MBTI and more into deeper and broader psychology in general and uh, at the same time I knew I had a big audience of INFPs and ENFPs and ENTPs uh, so I had these three large groups of people that had been supporting my channel for a really long time and then I thought okay what can I do in order to mm -hmm. you know make that happen and then I thought you know what I can do is start uh, some lighter vlogging channels where I talk to these personality types because uh, yeah I know that there's lots of people that are interested in learning about INFPs and about INFP experiences and now I'm not an INFP myself uh, but right. what I try to do is honestly I make these channels so that anyone can watch them and anyone can get a value from it, regardless of their personality right. type or how they identify. Uh, it's personal growth advice. It's just discussing real issues in life, like struggles uh, with relationships, heartbreak, friendships, mm -hmm. you know, like practical life issues, because like you, I also want it to be applied. Like I wanted, right. I don't want to just define and discuss definitions and cognitive functions to, uh, you know, a theoretical right. degree, but I actually want to give examples and like bring it mm -hmm. to something real. So I wanted people that are interested in INFPs and INFP experiences to get personal growth advice that might be interesting for them and might fit them and might speak to them based on, you know, their personality and their preferences. So that was the goal with it. Yeah, so that's 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 a full-time job right there trying to to do that. And it's and it's good that uh, a lot of INFPs uh, watch your channel um cuz um it's interesting. I don't know if you found this to be true, but I found this on other uh creator sites and somebody had mentioned it. The INFPs will comment and then they're they're real good for commenting and then deleting the comment. They'll write a re very long comment and then they delete it. So I don't know if you have that issue or not, but that's. Uh... Honestly, I think INFPs have been one of the most appreciative and supportive uh, uh, groups that have come to my community in general, like in terms of comments and responses and the support. Uh -huh. uh, I've gotten so much support from INFPs and ENFPs and ENTPs. Like these three groups have always been uh -huh. like super big uh, uh, in inspiring me to make videos because it's kind of like a two-way street for me in a sense, because when I make videos, of course, I want to give something out to the world, but I also right. am hoping, of course, to get something mm -hmm. back for it and mm -hmm. to meet people through what I do. So like being able to meet people like you coming up to me and talking to me, you know, like that's also 
part of why I do it because honestly, mm-hmm. there's not a lot of money in what I do here. I have a full time job on the side, right. so I have the things that I do. <laughs> I, I'm doing this because I enjoy the topic. I'm interested in it, uh, and I yeah, like uh, I love to explore these issues. Yeah, so it, it, it's best to get into it uh, in, into YouTube. Um, my million dollars I got last week hasn't come through. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Do it because you love doing it, and then whatever else happens, happens. Yeah. So that's uh, that. That part's good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Definitely uh, don't do it for the money. Do it for the uh, capacity and ability to be creative and to speak about anything you like or am interested in. And you know, uh it can be really a great tool to uh, get you inspired to do what you love. Well, that's great. And, and I do like the idea. And that's what got me interested in the contacting you, actually. Um, it's been in the back of my mind for a couple of years. I thought, I, I'm just going to just contact anybody. But uh, it, it got me really interested in that we do think alike in that the application of it. And it's more important to apply who you are than to, uh, I call it, in, in my videos, I call it the alphabet soup. I don't do, if I watch a video and there are creators and they go the, the SI and the NE and the, and it's all these letters. And by the first yeah. 30 seconds, I'm dizzy and I can't keep up. And I'm yeah. just like, I, I, I don't want to hear that. I want to hear experiences. Yes. You're making the right decision. I spent years learning all those alphabet soup <laughs> words and figuring out what they meant. And then I realized that, you know, uh, they were too abstract. Right. Uh like the cognitive functions themselves are interesting, but right. how they use it today and how they would just list out functions in an eight mm-hmm. function order and like make hierarchies and models for it. Um, it's very, it's only interesting from a theoretical point of view. So if right. you're super, super nerdy and just want to go really deep onto <laughs> it, but uh, we need to do more of the groundwork. Uh, actually, mm-hmm. we need to do more of the sensory work. Uh, I like to consider right. this more sensory work too. Because applying a theory and learning to put it to practice and use it when you meet other people and when you talk mm-hmm. to other people and mm-hmm. uh, in studies, you know, that's that's the practical work. That's that we need we need to spend more time doing that work and less time in the you know discussing infinitely long dis- uh, discussions about uh, which functions uh, uh, serve which role in the INFP uh, <laughs> and how and often de- and those debates and people would debate what's this and what's that, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I remember years ago, I was in a um, sociology program, a doctorate program in sociology, and um, I only lasted one semester. I drove them crazy, and they drove me crazy, because it was all theory, and it was just like one theorist and another theorist, and they were bouncing their heads back and forth, you know, it was just all theory, and I yeah. kept say, I kept raising my hand in class, and I said, but what do you do with it? Yeah. And the professor was like, just be quiet. I mean, they took me to the side after a while. So that we don't think this is for you. And I said, because oh, I kept saying every class, it was like, but what do you do with it? A theory yeah. is good, but what do you do with it? And they were like, you don't do anything with it, you know, so. Yeah, I had similar issues. I went up to the master's level in rhetoric, and I also took sociology classes as well. And uh, I enjoyed them. I actually do enjoy Uh the theory aspect of it, and I find it really interesting. But uh, what I was thinking about, what I wanted for these fields was that I wanted them to all to be like forced to on a 50-50 basis be involved in their civic community in some way. So I wanted these professors to actually be out in these organizations doing field work because I felt like there's there's a lack of field work here and there's a lot of uh-huh. studies, theoretical right. assignments. But right. imagine if these theoretical assignments were actually used in organizations and community, uh, like that would be so beneficial to our society and to people and to exactly. political yeah. development and everything. Yeah, yeah, I think we think alike in that is that uh, we have the theory so that we can go and apply it and make the world a better place to live in. Yeah. And not just have a theory for a theory, and that's all we're going to write about. And uh, a thousand years from now, maybe somebody will remember us and maybe not, but, you know, it's... Uh, um, yeah. That type. How, that's, I, see, how I see that, it is uh, intuition and sensing. Uh, when we're young, we often treat them as opposites. We think that, right. you know, 
uh, intuitive, sorry, so much better and the sensors are so stupid and blah, blah, blah. And what right. we don't realize is they are two sides of wisdom, right? So right, exactly. uh, if you're able to align them together, that's when mm -hmm. wisdom comes about. So if you're not able to connect with it, you're not going mm -hmm. to learn. And the same goes, of course, if you only have the sensory and you don't have the intuitive. So you do need to learn to, I like to see it as like build cross connectivity between it, like learn to get your brains to talk to each other is more. Right. And the, and I, I, I refer to it as developing your inferior functions. Yeah, exactly. De that's, develop that's... it. We, we all have the different functions, just develop it. I had one video not long ago. So it was a short and it was just like, um, about being psychic because people have asked me. Um, but yeah, I said intuitives are psych psychics. I said everybody is. Every it's just intuition. Everybody has intuition. Sensors have it, and we all have it. You just mm. have to develop it and develop um, um, the in the inferior part to us. If you are very intuitive, which I am, like eighty percent. I did get this computer going today. I did get this <laughs> going, and I'm learning slowly but surely. I'm learning a to how to do a few things you um um mechanical I, um ikea and i are not good friends um <laughs> if I, yeah i don't buy the i buy the ready ready built furniture i don't want to put anything together but um yeah but we all can do that yes um but on your channel and uh, uh i won't keep you too much longer but on your channel you do offer and i do want to go over this because you have uh things that um uh, besides just uh, videos, you're offering um, some things through Patreon. And can you explain a little bit about what that is? Yeah. So if uh, people want to support my channel, they can always visit patreon.com slash Eric Thor. And like what I try to provide through Patreon is more behind the scenes content. Uh, also uh, written articles and publications that I've wrote, uh, written over the years. And uh, also I have like a drop in session once a month uh, where people can just drop in and discuss anything that's on their mind so it's a good way for me to stay connected to my audience and everyone uh, around me in a sense but uh, it's also a good way like if people are have uh, or want coaching or are curious about their own personality then I offer these self-discovery sessions where people can get insights into themselves and who they are okay. and it's not me typing other people so it's not really a strict typing session in a normal way but it's me helping people type themselves so I listen and I provide insights mm -hmm. so that people can get more certainty into who they are and the goal is that people will know who they are themselves and through their own introspection and uh, logical okay. thinking <laughs> so, so that's a one-to-one -one thing or is that a group thing or one is one-to-one -one? the coaching sessions are one-to-one -one and uh, there's also a drop-in hour so uh, during the drop-in hours okay. uh, yeah you can discuss these things as well as well to some extent depending on you know what topics come up during that group session okay well that sounds really really great and, and developed it's something that we we need and a little bit different that's what i wanted to find out was how is it different? Because um, people watching, they'll say, well, there are INFP creators all over the place, but um, you've got a little niche, you've got a niche within a niche, which is um, good. And I wanted to find out more more about that. Yeah. I'm yeah. sure the viewers did too. Yeah. Yeah. I think all uh, creators in this community should challenge themselves as much as they can to think what's not on YouTube already, you know, because right. I see a lot of people when they start their MBTI channels, they start with, you know, what are the INFP cognitive functions and what right. are INFPs? And so yeah. I, I often think you're starting in the wrong distance. You should start more with something. What's the problem that you've had in your life or something that mm -hmm. you were talked about that you want to discuss through the lens of being an INFP? Like, uh, because that's something unique that you can offer that's going to be interesting for everyone to listen to. And uh, that's something other people are going to enjoy hearing about. Yeah, sure, sure. Well, I appreciate you being here today. Is there anything else that you wanted to mention that I forgot to ask? We've had a very good conversation, I think. Yeah, I honestly, I just really enjoyed this chat. And thank you so much for joining in, uh, like inviting me to join this. And uh, yeah, I'd be happy to talk to you too again sometime. Okay, well, great. So everybody that's listening, remember this has got two channels. The general one is called Eric Thor. 
I'll have um, everything in the, probably either in the comment or the description box below. And also the, uh, actually INFP, INFP, everything INFP only, and some extra tidbits in there with Patreon and um, one-to-ones and groups and different things of how to develop yourself as an INFP. Everything will be in the description box below. And um, I hope everybody's safe. And until next time, everybody stay safe.